Well, it is that time of week. I thank all of you that follow the show on Twitter at OTR Essentials, the Twitter handle. And those of you that don't, you should do that. Like even create a Twitter account just to do that. So that way you can participate in future Q&A videos. That's where I ask for the questions from. And uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'm probably going to have to split this up into two parts again because you jerks send so many questions. I appreciate that. just means i got to split it up because I want to make sure I can answer as many of the questions received as possible. may not get to every single one, but we'll try to get through a good number of them. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, KevKI27 asks, when do you think Rey Mysterio started to fall out of his prime? Usually uh, people start stop talking about him fondly after he won the world title. Ah. Uh, Probably sometime in the last decade, like 2011, 2012, but I don't know that people ever really hated on Rey Mysterio. Like, there's a respect there. Like, even if he's not somebody's jam, they tend to respect him and appreciate what he's done. So, um, you know, in terms of his prime prime, you know, it's probably 10 years or so, but, you know, he's still in appeal. It's still some form of an attraction. So, um, yeah. Stefan, 1679, 2174. Should WWE start using Loser Leaves WWE matches instead of just doing a release? Uh, maybe, but I'm sure from a contractual standpoint, there is some type of risk associated uh, with having these guys and gals go out there and wrestle right before you release them, potentially if they get hurt. So that's probably why they don't. But there's also a big part of this is you got to realize that a lot of these releases aren't really planned out. Like they're spur of the moment type of decisions. Like they know they're going to release folks, but then they seem to make their decisions at the last minute. Uh, Connor Holt 16, what are your thoughts on Pat McAfee? What are your thoughts on Pat McAfee's commentary skills? He's got energy and passion, and it shows. And I like that in my commentators. Is he perfect? No. Is he bad enough where it's worth me complaining about? Absolutely the hell not. I hope he continues to be a commentator for the near future. Christian Mingle, you got a $100 gift card to Applebee's. Who are you taking? Heath Slater and his kids? Or Jamie Noble and Nidia? Oh, I think there's only one answer. We're going to fucking Applebee's. I'm taking Jamie Noble and Nidia. I'm going to try and holler at Nidia too. I'm just saying. Uh, B.W. Rosas. What are your thoughts on the rumors of WWE considering turning the Tribal Chief back to being a heel from his current status of a babyface in the future? You also asked a Kenny Omega question that is not worth my time. The Tribal Chief one, however, is. They better not. They better not. Let things be as they are. There is no reason to change them right now. At one Alex Sutcliffe, do you think we will see Lashley versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam? Um, I don't. It's a sensible match, but I don't know that they're going to bring Brock back. I don't know if Brock's going to want to come back at that time. So I would lean towards no at this point. At Shaji underscore Ahmed. What does everybody want? Head! <laughs> Thank you for that one. <laughs> at Poor of Shankar 1. How old were you when you found out that pro wrestling is a work and... What was your re initial reaction to the discovery? Did it in any way change how you viewed the product as a whole? I was about 9 or 10. And yeah, it took me a while to adjust to the fact that I was watching fake shit. And then really realizing that it really doesn't fucking matter do I enjoy it or not. So it was probably around that time I think it was. Could have been a little older. I'm old now, so you have to forgive me. I don't exactly remember for sure. Um, but I think... There was a piece of, I figured it out very young that it was a work, but then still played along like it was real before eventually like changing. A little DJ boy, isn't it crazy that Rey Mysterio's never had a one-on-one -on -one match with God himself, Triple H? Ugh. Is Rey an atheist? I don't know if he is or not, but is that true? Has he never had a one-on-one -on -one match with God? I guess Hunter said he ain't selling the 619 for you. Ugh. <laughs> Surgeon D. Triple T and RVD versus Mr. Rout and Christian with a run-in from Jomo. Winner gets to know how big Batista's dick is. Is that an epic WrestleMania main event? Only way it would be an epic main event is if you had Triple T and Mr. Rout in their slap fighting the entire time. Now they could pull that off. That could fucking work. History Guy 007. 
Which one wrestler did you change your opinion on from not caring much about him or her to being a fan? For me, it's Sami Zayn. Didn't care for him as a face. Love him now as a heel. I get you. I've done a bit of a change on Sami Zayn, absolutely, but I'll go with Roman Reigns. Like from being a force down your throat, a white bread heel, to being the tribal chief head of the table babyface. So yeah, I saw the error of my ways. Tracy Cornelius. Who's holier? God or Dino Brown? <laughs> and for that, Tracy, you get a fucking foul. When you ask good damn questions like that, you get fouls. <laughs> Who's holier, God or Dino Brown? As the Bing Bang Cigarette. <laughs> That's a steep fucking price to pay for her smuggling fucking Marlboros. I'm assuming it's Marlboros or Camels. Because I don't know, you know, the, the Canadian viewers, you're going to have to help me. Like, are Newports even a thing there? Like, do people even smoke them? Or is it, like, Camels and um, Marlboros? Like, what is it that they smoke? Or is it like Benson and Hedges? Like, I don't know what Canadian cigarettes are. So, uh, <laughs> who's holier? <laughs> <laughs> well, God is from a higher power standpoint, but who's holier has to be Dino Bravo. 18 bullets. Bang, bang, is he dead? <laughs> you know why that's funny? Because he's dead. <laughs> At Staunch Aguilera, why are wrestlers today so soft? I think it's a reflection of society. And I think it just comes into a place where people just are not comfortable with being uncomfortable. They can't stand criticism. They can't handle heat. They can't handle constructive negative feedback. Now, I want to be clear that that has always been a problem in our society. And in some ways, maybe I need to retract slightly the beginning of the statement because I don't know if it's worse than it used to be. Maybe it's just more apparent and obvious. You know, but in the history of this country, people used to challenge each other to duels to the fucking death. You spoke bad about me or my family. I challenge you to a duel to bang bang the death. You had an entire segment, half of the country, secede from the Union and start a civil war because they got butt hurt because they didn't want to end the abomination on our world, which was the institution of slavery. So when you talk about snowflakey type of behavior or softness, like that's not a new thing. I promise you, if you had social media and the internet around in the 80s and the early 90s to, to the level that you do now, you wouldn't be thinking that all these guys or those guys and gals were tough either. They'd have been a bunch of fucking snowflakes too. Look at their shoot interviews. Every bit the bitch a bit of bitchin' whiny babies as the ones now, honestly. Vinny E underscore twenty one, the best heel world champion ever. Best heel world champion ever. Mm. Mm. Is it flair? Is it? Maybe? Maybe? At Ash the King, Rock or Austin, who was a better performer? Better performer? Austin was a better worker. Rock was a significantly better athlete in that time. Rock was better on the microphone. I think in terms of pure performance and all the elements, I think it's rock, personally. Dave G123 underscore 456. What was a bigger burial? The Summer of Punk or Bray Wyatt? Dino Bravo. <laughs> he literally got buried. Why? Because he's dead. <laughs> uh, bigger burial was the Summer of Punk. Because Bray Wyatt, you could talk about, well, you're trying to build him into being one of these dudes. CM Punk was in a position where you could have made him the dude. That was worse. 
at H Review 73, do you think 1998 was the best year of the Attitude Era, considering 2000 was the most successful for WWF? If so, why? Favorite year is 97. Probably the best year, though, is 98. As well, they talk about the financial success of 2000. I certainly don't think that that was the best year from a product standpoint. Um, at Larkin, how long is it going to take for today's fans to understand that characters and storylines matter more than moves within a match? When did wrestling fall so far? Well, as you had so many fans leave, the ones that stayed were the hardcore ones that tended to take this shit more seriously, often too seriously, and they gravitated towards more of the finer points of the art form. They gravitated towards the the work rates and the moves and the chain wrestling and the matches and the spots and all the other bullshit that really shouldn't matter much. So then as they got other people interested in wrestling, all you're hearing are these viewpoints that point to these things that appeal to them. And then these folks like, so it's a, um, it's, it's been a progression over a period of time and it's not going to change. It's only going to get worse from here. Um, let's see here. At Daniel Sims underscore 23, if Kenny Omega was to stop wrestling today, what would his legacy be? The matches he had with Okada or the matches with a blow-up doll and a nine-year-old girl? Yes. That's all going to be part of his legacy. Being one of the founding members of AEW and a shitty booker of the women's division um, and a crappy, mediocre world champion, like that's all part of the equation. And you talk about legacy, like you got to include all that shit because it's all a part of it. At Michael Gavin LE1, did you read the Forbes article of Tony Khan? The title of the article, The Next Lord of the Ring, which is a funny title for an article. Eh, ties into wrestling like it's actually kind of logical. Uh, he said in the article, I'm glad WCW failed and have AEW emerge as, as a major company competitor with WWE. What are your thoughts on his saying this about WCW? Well, I mean, from his perspective, he probably technically is happy that WCW doesn't exist because it created a situation where he could be in this kind of number two spot. Like, from his perspective, it makes sense. Like, fuck him for saying it, but it makes sense. If you look at it from his perspective, what the hell else did you expect him to say? Uh, at Fulia Georgian 1, have you ever seen a worse company at booking big men than AEW? I'm sure ROH has done a shitty job of it too, so I would point to them as well. But, you know, in current times, yeah, they do a really, really bad job because they don't get it. They don't know that jam. Although you could point at recent history and you could say WWE doesn't know what the fuck they're doing with their big men either. At Power Spy on 1, is it fair to say that one of the Invasion Angle's biggest crimes was the birth of the what chance? Yes! What? 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 Yes! Yes, yet another reason to say fuck the invasion angle. At Peter Jacobs 93, would you rather have all wrestling related memories deleted from your brain forever or watch a best of the Memphis Midcard piece of crap video for 48 straight hours? Oh shit. Oh fuck. Forty-eight hours. Straight. That's two days. Is that 2,880 minutes? Something like that? Ah, oh, shit. I, like 48 hours straight? You might have me here, Peter. I might have to, ch as much as it sucks and as much as I would hate myself for two days, as much as I would cry my ass to sleep for months afterwards... I'd probably have to go with the second one because I don't want to lose all wrestling-related memories from my brain forever. I just have to tough it out and take one for the fucking team. At Mid Carter J, should Sid get more respect for his attempt to save the Shockmaster's debut? <laughs> your, your statement should be, should Sid get more respect? The answer is always going to fucking be yes, no matter what the rest of the goddamn question is. But especially in that case, yes. <laughs> Bulldog. He fell on his ass. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So we got through some of the questions. I'm going to call it a wrap on this one. I'll upload the next 
part two for this weekly Q&A in a few hours. Thank you guys that submitted your questions. If they didn't get answered in part one, I might get to them in part two. So make sure you check that one out too.